Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery. Rated PG-13. So, Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery. Let's talk about some spoilers. The big thing, the big spoiler, the big thing here is that Janielle Monet's character is not who she appears to be. She has a twin sister who had a lot going on with um, Edward Norton's character. And it's this whole big business thing and and they're all and she's just trying to get revenge you know rightfully so rightfully so and I, I i you know for the most part the whole switcheroo worked for me i really liked it i thought it made sense and i thought it was executed very well i think it showed off the actress's um acting range which is always good to see um another thing and i'm just going to talk about some of the big spoiler scenes that i i really liked the Something I thought that worked really well for this was the fact that Duke, Dave Batista, is a character who dies first. I did not see that coming. And the whole thing, and this, this is why I say this movie needs several different viewings. This is um, the way he dies. Edward Norton says, oh, he picked up my glass, which had poison or must have had something in it, right? When in reality, we go back and, he's, and he didn't... The glasses were never switched. Dave Bautista never grabbed the wrong one. Edward Norton handed him that one. And it's then revealed that Edward Norton put lemon juice, which he's very allergic to. Which, like I said, on subsequent viewings, you'll pick up on these things. Which I think, which I think this movie may have a step up on the first one with several different viewings. Because with the first one, you could watch it a few times, pick up on new things. But with this one... I think you can watch it even more times and pick up on even more things. Um, this is one of those things where little things really matter in the end. Um, another scene I liked, or didn't necessarily like, didn't necessarily hate. Um, it's the scene where Blanc is like, hey, uh, I, there's nothing I can do. Take this drink and this little mystery item I hand you that the audience doesn't see. If you've been paying attention, you obviously know that he handed her the little thing of clear. And when she starts breaking things, you're just like, oh, uh, she's going to set this place on fire. So that was that was no mystery to me. And it was kind of cool to see all the other characters join in on the destruction against Edward Norton. Edward Norton's fantastic in this movie. Like, he's really good. Another thing that pops up in this movie is the little Knives Out motif that you heard in the first one, the little musical thing. So that I really liked. I liked. I liked hearing that. I think. I think the music in these kind of movies can be really fun, especially in the first one. Uh, unfortunately, the second one didn't have as many of those big, cool moments in the score. But that's okay. Another thing this movie addresses is the pandemic, which kind of surprised me. I didn't really expect that when I first saw characters in masks. I was like, oh, okay. I know. I mean, it, it tells you when this is set. And, uh, yeah, I haven't really seen another movie that really embraced the pandemic like this one. And, of course, they had a way of making sure all the actors got to take off their mask <laughs> with, a, uh, with a cameo from Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. Uh, he, like, shoots this thing in everybody's mouth. It's like a disinfectant thing. I have no idea what it was. It was funny. Um, that's another thing. This movie was funny. <laughs> and uh, it's witty, obviously. Something that the first Knives Out had that I really liked, and all murder mysteries, or whodunits have them, is where the detective starts laying out everything that happened. And and me personally, I I liked the first one when Blanc goes on his whole tangent. Um, this one is no no different, you know, he goes on his tangent revealing every, or peeling the onion per se. And uh, yeah, I just think there was a lot of things that the first one did better than the second one, but at the same time, everything that didn't work in the first one is stepped up in this one. So like I said, this is why this movie needs several different watches to really figure out which one was the better movie. But no, back to what I was saying. Um, just to watch Daniel Craig go out and act like that, it's, it, it's worth the two hours and 20 minutes that this movie is. So yeah, if you see this movie, enjoy it. It deserves to be in a theater, but whatever. And for 2023, this is my last upload of 2022. In 2023, go to the theater. 
Go watch a movie. Support your local theaters. And thank you for watching.